All right. Let's say hi to YouTube, everyone. Hi, YouTube. Hey, YouTube. This is the second round of the PCC Europe playoffs at Falkenberg, which, interesting choice of a track, I know. But, uh, yeah. Going to be doing a few laps here. <laughs> I think I had it at 84, no, 77 laps, right? Is that what it says in the description of the video? <laughs> uh, did you fix the LPs on this track? What? Oh. <laughs> You're in for a wreck fest on the one left hand turn then. It's PCC Europe, that's what we're... Are you sure? Planning on. All right. I'm going to probably be in and out a lot because Driver, I'm not feeling great. Your car. Neither am I, but I'm still... <laughs> yeah. I'll join that club. Well, it's mostly, in my case, it's a... Drivers, I took a nap car. right after work. I got up, I felt worse. <laughs> but... Oof. I just took a nap Driver. after work, not just because I... Not, it was more as like, I'm just mentally tired. And Driver, I got like, oh, I had a car you, fuck off. <laughs> I don't know who got the redneck to say driver start your engines, but okay. You want to trade, Cooper? Because I've got every COVID symptom without having COVID. <laughs> so you think, but yeah, that, yeah. Well, Lev Zerifin's on the pole. Feeney is second, Beaufort third, Novakovsky, Loxanen, Rinaldi, Jones, Tabakov, Rautio, and Schmidt round out the top ten. Also, and we're green. I, I can, now this is on the Discord stream only, but I can hear you. So. Oh. Yeah, because I'm sharing screen. I thought that was normal because I haven't had sound on Discord for weeks, but... I don't know what you're talking about about LPs, Cooper, but... They've been relatively clean so far. Oh. Oh, Interesting. <laughs> that is an alternative line. Oh, Gempalo Fini moves past Lev Zeripin in the final turn, and he will take the lead. Novakovsky follows him through, Zeripin drops back to third, Beaufort runs fourth, and in fifth is Christopher Loxen. Rinaldi goes way off and joins back on, loses a bunch of positions. Uh, no harm, no foul. Ooh, I wanted harm and foul. Oh, Lamau. <laughs> Speaking wah, of harm and foul. That was ambitious. That was, uh... That was very ambitious. Ambitious, yeah. By both of them. <laughs> I remember we ran F5 here once. We did. Yeah. I remember that oh. race being fine, even, like... But that... But even though, like... I don't think... Wow! 16 just cut down on the one. He gave him all the room in the world, because his track's not exactly narrow. At least in game. I don't know what it is in real life. And with that, Zerapin takes the lead back. That dirty wrecker. <laughs> 
Zerapin, Feeney, Beaufort, Loxanen, Tabakov, Schmidt, Jones, Rinaldi, Rautio, Bracky round out the top ten. Tchaikovsky, Magnuson, Ventola, Anselmi, Keda, Watkins, Kindall, Lipsbergs, Ekdal, and Luchas round out the points. Early on. They've been racing fairly clean. Have you seen the issues that uh, you expected to see? Yep. Lol. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just, uh... I threw this track on as a lol, why not? <laughs> Yeah, there's the giant hill. I remember we were running, we were we were running up that in practice just for shits and giggles. Oh, the hill. Yeah. Yeah. I remember running this an offline race on this track, and like, yeah, one of the cars just shot off into the hill and over across the track. And I was like, yeah. F. Oh, we've got another track with a meme hill uh, later. <laughs> this evening. Hmm. Oh yeah. Dwyer? Uh, Dwyer. Oh yeah. Except the mean hill is a big turn. I'm not talking about that. Oh, the pit road. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah. talking about that. Oh. Oh yeah, you didn't say that in the clip though. That is not the first time I saw a car flip there either. JP Beaufort's doing really well in this 10 car, but Loxanen is on the move. Little bit of door banging there. No harm, no foul, and they keep it clean ish, and Loxanen moves up to second. The cameras on this track are incomplete too, so that's why I'm sticking with just this one. Something I was thinking about was putting this on the regular season schedule and moving E4, soon to be E5, uh, into the playoffs. Mm. Thoughts? Uh, I guess. I, but I, I think you. I think this is a track that the cameras would need to be redone on. Um, quite a bit. Uh, quite a bit of others. Yeah, other things too. Well, uh, that's uh, yeah, something I'll work on. This track would, this track would be completely perfect for like the Mimi East series or something. Or something. no. But I was gonna say yeah, the cameras need work. You need probably a few. Well, the 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 East series is gonna be moving slightly west. Like they're gonna be running at Euro Speedway. Because if you run this track, I'm expecting at least one car to go flying off the hill. I don't know, have you seen a car go flying off the hill yet here, Dave? No, because these drivers are actually constant.
supply off these nuts. Good run by the four. Oh, there it oh, goes on some. Womp womp. What happened there? Uh, no. Yep. Uh, yeah, That's man, your teammate. teammate. Yeah, it does look like he tried to avoid him, avoid that contact, and spun uh, spun out as a result. Rather and drop and sell me to last. Instead of spinning his uh, teammate out, he spun himself out. Looks like uh, there was at least a, an attempt to avoid that. Where are you going? That's not a Heck, shortcut. Hecked all out into the greenery. It's not a Mario Kart shortcut. Nope. Damn, what I pilot realized it didn't realize it didn't work. Rinaldi seems to have formed a train behind her. This has been some halfway decent racing, actually. Aside from Zerapin driving off into the distance. Driving through the distance. And other cars. Officials are still investigating that maneuver that he did. Uh, to take out Novikovsky. Don't think there's a whole lot to look at. And no further action will be taken. Just pull an F1 and rescind the penalty after fan outrage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we were supposed to have Cheeky Nando Podium. <laughs> F1, okay. Whoa! Kapowski better be careful. At least well, the cars aren't like running off and like steering back onto the track. Yeah. Not far, yeah, you're not far off from that though. Maybe when a tire wear gets a bit worse. Is there like negative tire wear in this series though? No. That either way you either way you could still get that. Tire wear. Never heard of her. Oh. This track does have some like you do get a good look at the cars from this camera. Yeah. Oh uh, the, the two. Two's guy had some damage. Uh, 35 again. I'm just going back and looking to see where the two got hit. Okay. That's well. Well, I was in my comment about spearing off into the track. I don't think that's where that came from. That was. Oh. Well, Loxanen is actually catching Zerapin. Fifth is Jan Schmidt. Sixth is Rautio, Tabakov, Jones, Rinaldi, and Magnuson round out the top ten. Fastest lap is still held by Zerapin, but second is Fini. And don't realize you've got oh, that was the pace, pace car. Pace. Yeah. This track also is like one of the worst Elliot Sadler walls known to man. <laughs> I see it. It's on the front straight. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's where the start. It's where the starter's Let's box is.
Oh yeah, that's really bad. <laughs> Well, Feeny got around Loxanon, and is now hunting down Lev Zarepin. Have you guys ever seen someone hit at Bella's on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> Last point right now is held by Lozier. Lipsburgs has worked his way into the points, so has Ed Carroll. Kindle's in 17th. Is that bridge a solid object? I don't believe so. We might find out. <laughs> like, you could do that. Yeah. It'd be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but you could do it. Well, actually, not really. You, you kind of could. Yeah, you just you just like get a, you just like cut the segments up and then you just put like an invisible wall section in there. Wouldn't out being worse than the saddler wall though. <laughs> That's a bad thing. Forty seven nine to a 48-1. Like, they'll randomly get these really quick laps and then just not. <laughs> yeah. They turn traction control on for one lap. 91 has damage, I see. How did that happen? Oh. Yeah, I like that. Rude. Oof. Nicholas Malone is like... has nearly been caught by a car that spun out. <laughs> hey Patrick, that you? <laughs> It's not that slow. He's just not quick. And can drink. Coolant leak on the five. From ninth place. Oof. Yep. Funnily enough, while you were focused on his teammate. Yeah. Feeney has started losing time. Has lost a second now. Hi, back in just a minute. There is a full field for the uh, round of Minnesota. The series did manage to get uh, 46 cars on the well, 48 cars on the entry list, but uh, two withdrew. leaving us with 46. And how many will still be in the race after the first corner? We'll find out.
63 ran his fastest lap of the race. That is the 14th fastest lap of all cars. But he sits 9th. Putting in a good showing so far in these playoffs. He's had a surprisingly good year. Especially when you look at these results last year. I've been meaning to ask, how did a rental Italian manage to defense reps like Uh, because I don't study geography. You're not a geographizer. Well, we've got the two into repair damage. I did do research for next year, don't worry, we'll change the pack yellow. <laughs> Interesting call by the two car. To what yellow? Pacello Lubricants, it's an Italian brand. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, plan for him next year is three cars, Pacello, this drink, energy drink called Dino Luzzy or whatever, some Italian shit. <laughs> and then I'm still looking up some sort of medication for Rocky himself. Is it cool if they run Alphas next, Alpha Romeo's next year, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. So we're trying to make him go full Italian. <laughs> and Le and Alexi Lutov is into the pits. And so is Silvia Rinaldi. Um, er, sorry, Clara Kendall. Also, I just noticed the random, like, Koya Pollard. Are they scheduled? Uh... I don't know. Like, I assume most of them aren't. Kata I would guess no. Have, have, uh, you know, things to fix. So did the 91. 31 just blew up big. Also, 18 spinning, I think. Yeah, these might be scheduled. Yeah, this is, uh... For tires, but not fuel. O okay. Looks like a bit three stop race then. Bold strategy. Let's see if it pays off, Cotton. Here comes the leader. Borf Beaufort stays out. He will not lead the lap. But it's Beaufort, Schmidt, and Jones all running together. My guess is the leaders saw all these cars in and uh, didn't want to get undercut. So Zerapin came out of the pits. There's Feeney. Who's playing in the first corner there? Good question. Oh, that was it.
up. Yeah. Rude. Hits and then gets all that, and then has to pay for damage again sometimes. Yeah. Bruh. <laughs> Here comes Beaufort. Schmidt uh, stays out. So does Rinaldi. Yeah, Schmidt uh, sneak snookers uh, Beaufort out of a lap lead. No, Beaufort did lead one. Oh, okay. This is uh, an interesting strategy. The 10 decides to take a splash of fuel for some reason. And so does Leonid Chernov. Their strategies are beyond my comprehension. Do they want to get to a... Um... Tire stop. I have no idea. But Schmidt keeps leading. Schmidt leads over Rinaldi. Magnuson. Ventola. Novakovsky. Carroll. Uh, Haas and Selmy. Zerapin is there, and then Feeney's in the top ten now. The face, the face when you're so slow you say go by accident. I'm really curious to see if this strategy is going to play out for these guys. Also, don't forget to save at halfway, which is it. Oh, I think I'll be fine. Just do it anyway, you never know. Don't tell me what to do, Dave. Rinaldi goes off. I think uh, these cars that are still out here might be trying to one-stop it. Oh, if you get the lap, what, 38? You could one-stop it? Yeah. And a fuel run is... Not oh, that's an issue. Not, that's not right. <laughs> that is not right at all, because the cars that were... Wait, maybe it is. They didn't take fuel, they pit early pitters with all tires. Yeah. Meanwhile, Lev Zerapin has run his fastest lap of the race. Zerapin's faster by about a second to lap.
Last car in the points right now is Pat Kata. Who has a decent amount of damage on that car. It's been run over like twice now. Actually, yeah. where did they, yeah. Uh, after spinning out, Rinaldi dropped back to, or no, that was Kindle, dropped back to 27th. Last place right now is Nicholas Malone. Who may or may not have just gotten doored out of the way. So, by my understanding, uh, I mean Zerafin's going to have to pit at the same time as everyone else for fuel. So, you have to wonder if he's hoping to gain 20 seconds in that time. It looks like it's going to be between Schmidt and Rinaldi for the win. I mean, Zerapin's still gaining close to a second to lap. But he's coming up on uh, track. Also, uh Good recovery from the wood car to run this strategy. Oh, that's somebody around. That looks like uh, Watkins. What? That's some British, some British royals right there. And that was from 17. That moves. Uh, the 26 into the points. I just had a random thought. Yeah. Have you ever thought of putting one of these races on the big screen at the brewery? Uh, no. <laughs> just put it in the back room and never like, what's that? I already put an NASCAR at the brewery. PCC watch parties at the brewery. Well, patrons are drunk enough, they'll watch anything. We don't really get drunk people. Yeah, his brewery is not in Australia. <laughs> I mean, we get people that are feeling pretty good, but I wouldn't say they're drunk. 
You know, Australia's almost a fly during the moment. But we've got, like, weird demographics where I am. So no hipsters is what I'm hearing? It's like a lot of older people. He said weird demographic. Yeah, that's like, it's just like breweries, it's like small time breweries, at least in America, like hipster bait, considered hipster bait. So, oh, bye, bye bye guys. Tracks that way. Tis but a small hiccup in the plans of Lev Zarepin. <laughs> That was first position, too. Yeah, that was. Yeah, we get, like, a lot of families and a lot of couples. Like, oh, let's go to the beaver for date night. Kind of yeah, thing. Like, they must be good. Huh? You serve food? <laughs> what? Go to the beaver for date night. Yeah? I was just about to say, Mike, I might re I'm, I might put I, I, that out of context. I'm, so I'm sorry, I, I have a little bit of a dirty mind, that's why. It's alright, so do a lot of people. Okay. Listen, Ryan, I thought about saying something too, but I held back. No, a lot of people call our place either the beaver or the beav. Oh, all right. So. I mean, hell, I'm planning on doing a post coming up here uh, with pictures of, like, where people have taken our beer. And it's going to say, and where have you taken your beaver beer? <laughs> <laughs> nah, just go, and where have you taken your beaver today? Nah. Where's your beaver bed? No, I'm going to include the word beer. I got to keep it at least like... <laughs> yeah, you're going to want to keep the families coming back. You're not going to be bad frog, are you? What? What was that one beer that like sponsored like a bunch of... <coughs> Hang on. What? What was that beer? That, was it called Bad Frog Beer? It sponsored like a bunch of race cars, but like half the time they didn't park. In fact, it was like Frog uh, Flipping Bird was their logo. I know there was uh, a, a brewery that sponsored, like a local brewery to Talladega that sponsored like Norm Benning and Joey Gase couple years ago at Talladega. It was called Cross-Eyed Owl. Oh. It was XEO. Oh yeah, didn't they sponsor one of the races? No. They didn't sponsor a race, but they sponsored uh, Joey Gase and uh, Norm Benning. No, we've already sponsored a real life racing uh, team, so. What series was it? It was the 12 Hours of Canton. It was at uh, K1 Speed. Oh, so go kart. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we sponsored a go kart team. And uh, there were two familiar names on that team. Uh,. Will Goss and Tristan Wilhoyt. Nice. From Texas? Actually, he's from Alaska. Oh, yeah, but isn't he like, living in Texas right now? So he goes to actually, school in he's going to school in Texas. So it was actually Will Hoyt then? Yeah. Makes sense. Well, that team also had sponsorship from Alaska Raceway Park. Makes sense. But compared to the other teams that had like months to prepare, this team was th was thrown together in like two weeks. <laughs> All things considered, they finished uh, 
I think it was like 41 laps down. But they lost seven or eight of those right at the start when their cart wouldn't start. <laughs> So take that for what you will. <laughs> but they did finish, which I'm sure some others didn't. Uh, no, every team finished. Well, scratch that from the record. Uh, Schmidt's actually running some pretty quick laps. Now that he's got fresh air. Uh, Magnuson comes in, so do Ventola and Novakovsky. This is for fuel, I'm guessing. Anyways, yeah, when after the race, that's, that's bad from here. I posted in voice chat. And they're taking one can of fuel. I'm not sure if that's the right call. Schmidt is in. Here comes Rinaldi. And Zerapin stays out. Uh, we had a wreck. That was it. What happened with Kalen Luchas? Boing. Wow. Rinaldi. Zerapin continues to lead, but he still has to pit. Shempalo Fini is 15 seconds back, Loxanen is 17. Beaufort 25, Tabakov 26, and so is Jan Schmidt. What's up, nerds? What's up? What's up, nerd? How's life? Uh, good. still breathing unassisted. Yeah, yep. that's good, that's good. I like that for both of you. <laughs> Every day above ground's a good day. But I like being underwater. Do, 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 you know do, what I meant. Do, do. Listen, I've learned that I've got to take things very literally after a small, non-argument argument with my girl. So at this point I'm being an asshole on purpose. It's just led into other parts of my life. Anyway, yeah. I'm glad you guys are all still here. Yeah, I think so. We're good. Oh, uh, I forgot to tell you. I'm actually converting um, part of the Ricky Racing clothing brand into just its own separate clothing brand. Uh, cool it leak on the 27. Oof. That's a potential win. Uh, <laughs> gone. So much for that strategy. But here comes everyone else into the pits. I think that'll give it to Sylvia Rinaldi now. Remind me to get another shirt from you. Oh, Are I'm you actually, yeah. I'm about to turn it into an entire separate clothing brand. Okay. Do you have any, like, different designs? Um, I'm working on some with a friend of mine who does uh, fashion designs every now and then. Okay. So, we're the 90s collection is going to be more 90s based and like it's going to be the combination of 90s and racing, but like there are going to be some things that are going to happen cuz right now I'm poor and have nothing else to do. Gotcha. I just left a league race and my wheel lost for speed back mid corner and I spun, so now I'm upset. 
Oh, that sucks. It was my first race with that leak. If I go back, they'll know. If not, it's probably because I'm That's too nervous. That's a decent amount of damage on the 36. Oh, ran into the back of Luchas. I did not disable uh, pit road collisions for this, because there's only 30 cars. And I was not planning on throwing cautions, so... But JP Beaufort leads right now over... Sylvia Rinaldi, Grigori Novikovsky, Anders Magnuson, Heike Ventola, Lev Zerapin, Ed Carroll Manfred Haas, Jan Schmidt, and Leonid Chernov. Oh, I wanted to tell you, uh, Nick, I'm not going to uh, Colossal Con this year. Huh. Just not too much going on? Uh, well, the group I usually go with, uh, I mean, they're, we're not getting a room because they're getting married this year, and instead we're just gonna do, like, uh, like, the entire uh, Colossal Con group is going on, the, like, the bachelor slash bachelorette, bachelorette party. You know what? That's fair. That's, that's funny, I think a lot of my friends, ironically, are taking a year off of conventions right now. Like, me and my friends usually go to Phantom every year, and we're all like, you know what? Let's just go to Anime Expo, because we haven't done that in forever. And we're that's like the only convention we're all going to this year, because Crunchyroll calls mid every year. What happened to the boat for? Uh, just had to pit for fuel. Uh, so this puts Sylvia Rinaldi in the lead. And she should have enough to go the distance. But does she have enough brain to go the distance? That is the question. J.R. Hildebrand right now. <laughs> well, she just ran her fastest lap of the race. Apparently she is not saving fuel. Don't talk about Junior Hildebrand like that. I guess he's uh, been talked about for like getting one of the last uh, rides available. What, for the 500? Yeah. Which I will be going to this year. Nice. Uh, turn off pit. I still find it the funniest thing of all time that um, Takuma Sato, a known F1 racer, is literally only doing ovals this year. Basically giving a giant fuck you to anybody who said it's not doing ovals anymore. <laughs> Daniel Ricardo be like, ovals are scary. <laughs> yeah, dog, you definitely weren't doing 232 at fucking Monza at any point in time. Nah, it's fine. And like, Takuma Sato is doing like, it, Takuma Sato's like end career arc is like similar to like Gordon Johncock and Tom Sneva. You just run the ovals only because you're really good at them. <laughs> Unreal, unreasonably good at him at that. Actually, no, it, it does make sense, though, because um, if there's one thing that, like, F1 guys that go over to IndyCar tend to do better at, it's the ovals than the, than the road courses, and the reverses tends to be true as well. Rojan did do pretty good at Gateway for goddamn no reason. Because I, I, don't, I don't remember who it was, but it's, it was like that the... It was like a... a it was like the driving technique for an oval and an Indy car and um, and a Champ car and a Formula One car uh, is actually very similar. Because like when Nige came over, he like he yeah, he he got the win at Surfers, but he kind of bullshit his way into that one, and he was otherwise out to lunch on the road courses, whereas on the ovals he was very strong. Like ninety three New Hampshire is a fucking amazing race. <laughs> 
Is that kind of like how you can adapt or of course the shrimp crash most of the time? Or vice versa? No, not, not oh. quite. Unless your name is AJ Almendinger. Unless your name is on Papa Montoya and the track is and the track is Pocono. Yeah. <laughs> or I seem to remember him doing really well at Richmond for some reason. Montoya? Yeah. Yeah, Montoya always ran really well at Richmond. Or Marco Sambros at Bristol, just all the time. Yeah, but like, um, um. Like Rick Mears went like was offered an F1 seat with Brabham, but in typical Rick Mears fashion, he didn't want to go to F1 because he didn't want to deal with the politics. Which was fair. Which yeah, I totally get that, and it was in 1984 as well. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Hey dog, you want to get your shit slapped in by Ayrton Sin every year? Yeah, here's your fucking chance. Like uh, Mears would like Mears would have Mears could have hung with him, but like Mears, it's Rick Mears. He would have just been like, dude, I don't like anyone who would try to start shit with him. He's like. Dude, I don't care. I'm literally here to so, drive race cars really fast. Manfred Haas's strategy might actually work out for him. He's sitting seventh right now. Yeah. Like Maybe. that's a that's the thing people don't realize about Rick Mears is that he was kind of like Kimi Räikkönen before Kimi Räikkönen. Kimi Räikkönen before Cameron. Well, no, Whoa. it's like he didn't. Oh. But no, like he just he was. Paul Page described him as the laziest race car driver he'd ever seen. I fuck with that heavy, though. Yeah. I love people like that. Oh, yeah. Like, but no, it was like... It, 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 was like it was like Mears knew exactly what he would need to do, and it was because he had such a technical mind that he could just show up um, and like figure out what he needed really quickly. Well, this is interesting. Uh, Lev Zerapin's up to second and has... Uh, to gain eight seconds on Rinaldi. Uh. You know what? For the future, just pave the outside of that corner where they keep fucking going off. It's the yeah. path they end up going through. Yeah, I can do that. Flatten it and just. <laughs> just Ash. fucking let it. Just let him walk into Lynn the whole thing. <laughs> just see what fucking happens. I'll do the fucking, um. Or, uh. You know. Do they took the, the access FIA? road. <laughs> yeah, I'll just say the FIA thing of just paving fucking everything. Dude, I'm telling you, Watkins Glen every year is the funniest shit because it's just, oh, carousel? The corner exit is over there. Yeah. I love track limits, but I also love when track limits are absolutely fucking of you. What's a track limit? <laughs> Yeah, well, like, I don't know. It's it what always... I tell black people about their hair. It's a limit to your, it's a limit to how many tracks you can have in that bitch. Full throttles the S's. Y'all don't do that at Suzuki every year. I mean, like uh, Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen is real. I like hate that track. Like after all the, all, after all those runoffs are paved. It's a love hate relationship because I love the way I love the way they run it, but like I also would like some punishment for running wide. Uh, that that should all be sand, if you ask me. Give yeah, me sausage curbs. Give me oh, yeah. sand pits. Did I tell you guys that I saw? Uh, we're gonna have a race on our hands. Uh, Zerapin has cut the gap to under seven seconds. I tell you guys I saw the rarest sight of all time this weekend. Oh yeah. It uh, yeah, Sonoma season. with grass in the rain. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, because this time of year, Sonoma's pretty. Yeah, I, I was get, there all. Hmm? I don't get why NASCAR doesn't just keep it as part of the West Coast, or like put it in as part of the West Coast swing. Literally, they should have been driving last week, and it would have been a full rain race. It did not stop raining. Like, it was dry Saturday, it was dry Friday and Saturday, and it just poured Sunday. Because we were racing that weekend at the cart track up top, up, at the top of the track. I don't know if any of you guys knew that that was a thing up there. Yeah. But, oh, um,. We were racing up there. Number one, uh, I've learned that all the kids that we have on this team can't fucking drive. But number two, I learned that Sonoma is really fucking pretty when it rains. Yeah. We we learned that day that a cart rim could pop and break <laughs> in half. Like the inside of the rim is a detached from the outside of the rim. Damn. But, uh, yeah, no, being at Sonoma, and, uh, also, Memo Gidley was, uh, practicing on Friday at the car track, 
And then he kind of told me I was going to the SR race at Sonoma, and he's the points leader, so I couldn't really tell him I wasn't going to show up, so I guess I'm going. Yeah. Well, you know what you say then? You're going to get me in for free? He sent me tickets. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll be there, I guess. I wasn't... I didn't plan on leaving my house, but I'll be over there now. Yeah, when he gives you tickets and bullies you into going, you kind of have to. I mean, Memo's always been really nice to me for some unknown fucking reason, and I've just been doing whatever he said at that point. Memo Gidley's a good guy from all so... But I also have to remember, every day I see him, he's Mexican. It's not really yeah. relevant, it just throws me off when somebody, like, reminds me. There's plenty of white Mexicans. Yeah, but his name is Jose. So that, that's, what, that's what throws me off the most. His name is Jose. We call him yeah. Memo. Yeah, but, it's uh... Weird. Yeah, it's a, it's a nickname. No, his, his, it, it's from his, um... Guillermo is his other name. Yeah. Oh, it's still so, weird, though. But, but, Dawson, you got the memo, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? This race means absolutely nothing to me anyway. I don't feel like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Ten to go. And uh, the gap has stabilized at about eight seconds. Also, I don't know if you guys know the pro director Matt Fields, but I called him cheese dick, and he suddenly, for some reason, wasn't angry at me. What? His photographer told me to call him cheese dick next time I saw him, so who? I did. Matt Fields. Remind me who that mm -hmm. is again. Uh, pro drifter usually dri usually takes the Corvette in the uh, FD FD events. Okay. Yeah, so I got told to call him Cheese Dick by his photographer, who, for whatever reason, worked with me at Google. I wonder if he still has his job. Anyway, uh, thirteen um, just blew a tire. That's all oh, rip. Thirteen is uh, continuing to have a miserable day. Yeah, was already running last <laughs> of the cars about left. Thirteen Nicholas about to be like, yo, dog, can I just change my number? Nicholas Malone is going to finish Nicholas alone. <laughs> oh. Forever Malone. Let's see. Wait, would it? Would you say that because he finishes ahead of Richard Lisford, that Lisford finished post Malone? Everyone's having the tire problems, but damage zero means that it's just a vibration, right? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> well. Good news for, uh, Mr. Malone is, is, uh, he was right there. So we, this race will in fact not be in a post-Malone world. I hate this difficult so much. <laughs> I've only got you every minute. Also, has anybody ever recreated any of these cars in automation? Yes. I think Greg has done it a couple. Uh, Kath has. Ryan has yeah, done the Aspira. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, that, I know they did it a while ago. So. Somebody find me these templates. I'm gonna need something to do tonight. Oh, okay, I can. Oh, I can um, get you some of my own. Oh, that's Actually, uh. Oh wait, what are you talking about, Dawson? You talking about the automation cars within the series? Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, that's a... for, oh, this? Yeah. I can... Are you doing? What are you doing with them? I don't know. I sometimes like to fuck with them at BMG. I just like to. I just like to recreate shit when I'm bored. Okay, I can send oh. you a bunch of mine. I like in. I like internal lore with myself, so I just make shit up as I go. Okay. This is gonna be a fuel mileage race. And Zerapin is within five seconds. I had to relearn how car view worked about three days ago. Yeah, mm. I was going to say, I think Rinaldi ran off track. That had a lot of Yeah. Better. Well, it's Novikovsky, Ventola, Magnuson, Carroll, Schmidt, Haas, Loxanen, and Feeney. In the top ten. That was by far one of the most British cars I've ever seen in my adult life. Which? The green one. The one that has a giant English oh, yeah. one. <laughs> like everything it, about this just screams England outside of the fact that I'm pretty sure it's a Pontiac. 
It's a no, BMW. that's a BMW. I refuse to believe this. You know, the only thing it's that okay. could... The it's only thing just that, quality. If it could make it, um, if you can, if it was a white beamer, then it would be the, it would be a douche wagon, so. Well, the guy would have to be from the Middle East to drive it, so that's like, yeah. kind of a rule. Or from the, or from, uh, the Balkans or Poland. True. Well, I know what I'm doing for Yoho Bovisic next year. Oh god, he's within four seconds now, I think. Yeah. yeah. Five laps to go. Sometimes I wish that the IRS and AI would just- not the IRS and the NRA would just fucking dump each other just to see what would happen. They do sometimes. <laughs> Hold some fucking grudges, just start- <laughs> if you see two drivers, they just hate each other immediately. Beef. We have got dinner. beef! This this last five laps is brought to you by Arby's. Where is the beef? Oh, that's a fight. Well, that might have just saved Vernaldi's race. Putting two lapped cars between her and Lev Zarepin. But Zerapin hasn't really been able to gain quite like he was before. First, I couldn't let a Saturn Ion beat me in a race right now. It's an aura, but... Personally, I couldn't let a Saturn beat me in a race right now. <laughs> I've owned a Saturn. Not recommended. For whatever reason, that thing would not die, though. Um, yeah, yeah, my mom had a Saturn a long time ago, and she loved it. Like, absolutely loved that car. It's definitely a car for people that don't like cars. Unless you get the red line, but, like, the Saturn is the car of all time, and it runs. That's the best thing about it. A car you that runs everything is perfect. Car. I think I starved that thing of oil for like a month and a half and it still kept running. <laughs> Why? I forgot to put oil in it. Well, I simply because, did not give... Huh? Well, also because like every branch of General Motors that seemed to know what it was doing, they killed it off. Yeah. Because because it's not it, it's not breaking enough for uh, uh, parts dealers to make money off it. If Pontiac right. had stuck around for another year, we could have got the the G8 ST. Yeah. Pontiac for sure could have been so rivaling Dodge on just like absurdly absurd cars that they don't really need. Pontiac was at, at the end was just rebadged Holdens. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there, that's a downside. No. I love Holden. Holdens are just rebadged Holdens. Uh, now. eleven is blowing up. Where is well, the 11? Well, Where Holden's are you? Were re Holden's were rebadged okay. Opals, now they're just Chevrolets. Shout out to Opal. Oh, fuck, speaking of Opal, I never finished that fucking race in Gran Turismo. <laughs> uh, white flag for Silvio Rinaldi. And Zerapin is 1.2 seconds back. <laughs> He's gonna take the high side! That reminds me, I gotta like record Grand Detour. Also, I had a thought. I'm not sure if it's a good thought. Huh? Oh, uh. I'm not gonna put these. <laughs> anyway, so I, I'm not sure if it's a good thought that I just had, but like, and hear me out. And going through the final turn, Sylvia Rinaldi is gonna take the win at Falkenberg. Woo. Hear me out. What's really stopping IndyCar from running a race on an oval in the opposite direction outside of how some tracks are built? Uh, great question. 
I understand why NASCAR can't do it because their drivers are on the left side of the car, but IndyCar doesn't have that same excuse. Yeah, but if the cars are built to... Indy cars are built symmetrically. Yeah, yeah. But just because they're built symmetrically, does yeah, okay, but the weight distribution on it makes it go is more on an oval car is more toward making it go left, right? You can simply flip that. That's a setup thing. Yeah, yeah that's true. And uh, yeah, nobody runs out of fuel. Time. I have a feeling part of that is down to um, um like what pit lane eggs it would look like. That was a pretty good race. I understand that a good amount of it is, number one, a comfort thing. Number two, how tracks are built. But like, Calder Park existed. Yeah, but they uh, they ran both directions around that track, and usually, yeah. even then, when they, the American NASCARs cars came down, they ran um, uh, anti-clockwise, and Oscar ran clockwise. Yeah. I'm just saying, Indy Car could run it clockwise. Let's see what happens. Fuck around to find out. We ain't got shit else to lose outside of maybe a driver, but he'll be fine. Room of Doom time, and then it's on to the cup race. Do any cars switch the fuel tank based on what side of pit lane they enter, or are they always? Yeah, I believe they do. Uh, they do. They have, they have like, um, they also have a two. Uh, Everyone like passes. Fuel in- they have like a fuel intake on both sides of the car, and then they just like unbolt the one that they're using. Well, on oh, to Mike, the cup race. I, Mike, I love that uh, background on your computer. Oh, the 